R ask Reddit. What secret are you currently hiding from someone that you're willing to share on Reddit? I've started to on occasion accidentally, bit on purpose, not hang up my phone correctly when getting off a call with my daughter-in-law. I then proceed to talk to my husband about how much I enjoy talking to her, how lovely I think she is, how glad I am that our son chose her, and whatever other boost I may think she needs. She doesn't have any family that uplifts her, just the kind that tears her down. I started doing this after my son told me about his wife coming to him in full on snot tears, because I had once but dialed her while talking to my husband about her. She stayed on the line to hear what I really thought of her, expecting the worst because that's been her experience of family. Apparently she was quite touched by the things I said, and my son told me it gave her a confidence boost that lasted weeks. So I do it more often now. Neither of them have any idea I do it on purpose, though. They just think I'm getting old and worse at managing my tech. You are that rarest of mother-in-law, the good kind. There's also something about people who feign elderly confusion to get away with things that tickles my funny bone. My grandparents have been doing it since they were in their 50s. I a comment made me remember working with an older lady during my first job at McDonald's. If you ever asked about the grill she'd always say I forget. I remember coming in one day and the guy we had on grill had ran to the restroom and she needed sausage down soon. I looked and caught her dropping some. She looked at me, put her finger to her lips and smiled. She eventually quit but came back 6 months later and I remember asking in broken Spanish where she went and why she came back. With the same smile she said home, but I got bored. It was great working with her both of us barely speaking the other's language but still doing things to make one another laugh. I haven't thought about her in a minute so thank you for the memory jog. I have a sweet one. My father is convinced that lilies were my late mother's favorite flower because their wedding venue was filled to the brim with them and she was supposed to be the one who picked the flowers. He got her lilies for every birthday, anniversary, and whenever she was in the hospital, my mother was in poor health most of her life. When she passed away, the funeral was full of lilies, and he still sometimes puts a vase of lilies beside her urn. The thing is, my mother once confessed to me that lilies weren't her favorite flower. She was fine with them, but she preferred morning glories and sunflowers. My domineering grandmother, however, told her those weren't classy enough for a wedding and hounded her about it until my mom gave in and let her pick lilies. Mum was actually pretty wounded by how dramatic the floral arrangements ended up being. Another big, showy way for her mom to say, I'm right and you're wrong. When she later voiced this, my grandmother brushed it off with, Please, no one's going to remember a thing about your wedding. But my dad remembered. He got her lilies every day of their honeymoon, and by the end of the week she'd gone from annoyed to deeply touched. He didn't know the backstory, he just wanted to make her happy, and in doing so he kind of stripped the negative association away from them. She told me she liked that he gave her lilies more than flowers themselves. They turned from a symbol of being ignored to a sign that somebody was thinking of her happiness. She swore me to secrecy, and I'll take it to the grave. R.I.P. Mom. Update. So as many of you have said, the take it to the grave line will mock me forever because you'll convinced me to tell my dad today. As predicted, it only took a few hours to get to this you? Text from a sibling, and we all quickly conferred and agreed I should call him in the morning. And dad's first reply? Oh yeah, I know that, morning glories were her favorite. They just don't sell bouquets of those, so I'd get her the next best thing. Apparently she always said lilies were her favorite. But she talked about positive memories around morning glories so much that he put two and two together. However, he had no idea that my grandmother chose the wedding flowers and was kinda pissed to find out, doesn't that just sound like her? He wishes mom said something, but figures maybe she didn't want to win and still end up thinking about a fight with her mom every time she looked at the flowers. He's touched to hear he made them special for her, but did say she often told him how much she appreciated it, just left out the stuff about the wedding. Interestingly, he thinks mom actually exaggerated the honeymoon lilies. He's pretty sure he only gave her lilies twice, on the way out and on the way back home. As I said in another post, dad does not know what Reddit is and does not care to learn, but he thought it was nice that the story made people happy. 
Then he launched into telling me why I need to get a new car already, and the thread was lost on Mayo. Or, that's good, see, you should send your little stories to the New Yorker or something. People will read them, I keep telling you. My dear old dad, who only vaguely understands what my side hustle is and has adorable faith in both me and the publishing industry as a result. Dad did somehow completely miss that mom liked sunflowers, to the point that I don't think he actually believes me, nan, I think you misunderstood, she liked that Van Gogh painting, that's what she meant. The painting of sunflowers, babo. That's why. But you can't win em all. Thanks for wrapping this up in a bow, read it. Before we go further please press the red subscribe button below if you're enjoying this so far. I have rented a bouncy house water slide for my wife's 39th birthday. She has no idea. OMG can I come for it? That's like my literal dream. So my excuse is we have friends staying that weekend that have children. We don't. But secretly it's because I know she'll love it. Our wedding reception had one. Along with a slip inside. Sumo suits. And giant boxing gloves 10 stroke 10 would do it over again. I am the 7 accounts that donate to my cousin's streams. Little man needs something positive and it's better if he thinks it's from internet strangers and not a sympathetic cousin. Edit. For those telling me to link his stuff, I'm not going to. Not meant as an insult to the decent folk on here, but the internet is vile and I would like to spare him that as long as possible. I do this with my son. He has made hundreds of YouTube videos over the last 3 years and I have been paying for views subs, and supporting his channel to help keep his spirits up when his channel growth slows down. I could never tell him, but it's a hobby he's very passionate about and I just want to support him. I'm glad I found other people who do this. My son gets so excited when he gets another subscriber. Hell I've even gotten people at work to subscribe to his channel. The look on his face makes my year over and over. I told my best friend I won a holiday in a raffle and wanted her to come with me free of charge. We stayed in a nice hostel, did lots of fun activities and I paid for it all with a prepaid credit card from the raffle. I didn't win anything, I booked it all myself and paid everything for her because she deserved a break and I knew she couldn't afford it nor would she have accepted me paying for her. I would do it again 10x over, she deserves the absolute world. This is so adorable. She's genuinely the best person I know. It made my year doing this for her. In 6th grade, I pissed in a bottle of coca cola that had 1 stroke 4 of its content remaining. You see, this arsehole of a bully often tries to forcefully take my snack during recess, so I handed him that bottle of cola. He did make a comment that it had an awful aftertaste, but nothing too crazy of a reaction. At that moment, I felt like I would burst into laughter, but if I did, he would suspect something was wrong with the cola. I also knew I would be in a world of trouble if the teachers knew I did something horrendous like that. So I kept my mouth shut and walked away. Till this day, I haven't seen him since 6th grade, and I'm currently in my first year of college. Well played. This would never work for me because. I would be too grossed out at the thought, and. The bully himself would never know. There would be no satisfaction in it for me. Tis the curse of being squeamish. I'm not colorblind. When I was very young I didn't understand what colorblindness was. My dad is colorblind and I thought that automatically meant I was too. And apparently everybody did. I was maybe in high school before I actually took a test and. I aced it. But by then all my friends had been buying colorblind compatible versions of board games and we had all sorts of inside jokes about being colorblind. Honestly it's been a bonding moment with my friends. So I just haven't told them and I've kept up the ruse. For about 15 years now. That's intense. Go to take it to the grave now but I understand the why. This is something George Costanza would do. George, it's over. Done. No more. Jerry, with Sharon? Why? You didn't tell her did you? George, oh it's worse than that. I showed her. I screwed up and now it's over. I tried to give her flowers like she likes and it went so wrong. I gave her the wrong ones. They were the wrong color. Jerry, but she knows you're colorblind. You convinced her. George, I switched the colors the wrong way. 
She loves red flowers so I figured I would get her the opposite of that and she would think it's cute and thoughtful that. Despite my affliction, Jerry made up affliction. George made up affliction that I still spend my hard earned money on something that makes her happy and it doesn't matter if I got her the wrong color because she thinks I'm colorblind. She would even feel sympathy for me thus entangling our emotions more and drawing us closer together. Jerry, right, entangling afflictions, go on. George, but I forgot the logic involved. Instead of buying the most bland, dull, and morose flowers I could find, I, Jerry, you didn't? Doll swings open and slams against the wall. Kramer enters George. Green. Lime green. Almost neon. Like a bunch of lima beans. Jerry, how did you get from red to lima beans? George, I just went blank at the florists. There was a woman behind me with a crying baby and the line was long and I had to get to the cleaners too before they closed and I couldn't take the heat. I panicked. Jerry, did you have the index card? Kramer. He better. I worked on that for hours. George slowly removes a crinkled up, musty index card with ink smeared on it and lowers his head in shame. Kramer sees it and lets out a gasp Jerry, how could you? George, you never left anything in your pockets at the cleaners. Kramer, all my hard work. Ruined. Jerry, red always looks like grey or bland and lacking in color. Even I know that. Lime green should be the last thing you thought of. Kramer. Does this mean he's not colorblind anymore? Jerry, it means that Sharon won't see him anymore. If George were red and she looked at him she would see no color at all at this point. Elaine enters the apartment and feels the negative vibe in the air. Elaine, let me guess. Jerry, it's over. The jig is up. Elaine, I told you it wouldn't work. You should have played deaf instead of colorblind. You could have been deaf and dumb and you would only need to act out one of those things. You didn't listen and it's not because you're deaf. Laughter and funky bass line. I am a teacher, and I am off for the summer. I get to spend all that time with my daughter, age 4, and my son, who is not quite one yet. My wife works full time. My son is just starting to talk, and my wife and I have a friendly competition going to try to get him to say dada or mama first. What she doesn't know is that while she is at work, I spend the day talking about her and saying the word mama a lot. We have been working on it together for weeks. The other day, she walked in the door after getting home from a long day, and he looked at her and said mama clear as day. She was so happy and rubbed it in my face, playfully, that he said mama first. Even did a little happy dance. I'll never tell her. Edit. I'm going to edit since I can't respond to everybody. Thanks for all the kind words, and I am glad my little story has made so many of you happy. I cannot describe how badly I hope somebody loves and cares for me one day the way you do for your wife 10 stroke 10 good sir. This story actually made my day. She loves me back even more so it's the least I can do. My husband has large feet, large enough that there are only a few places I can buy him shoes and since the in-person place near me closed down they're pretty much all online. All this to say, his shoes are dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign. He also grew up poor. Like the kitchen floor was his bedroom poor. He stopped being able to find his shoe size in stores before he was in high school, and before he met me he always only had one pair of shoes at a time, and sneakers were his everyday work dress shoe. He even worked fast food jobs in regular sneakers because he couldn't find non-slip in his size. And because getting each pair was so difficult and costly he'd often wear his shoes until they had holes in the soles before replacing them. When he was studying to be a mechanic I got him a pair of steel-toed boots for his birthday. I splurged and got a good brand that would last for years. He recognized the brand and knew what they sold for and he demanded I return them. He was planning on squeezing into cheaper, smaller boots and dealing with it. So I lied, said I had bought them months before during a sale. Got him at 40% off, then signed up for all their stuff for an additional 20% off. I had paid full price. I bought him sale shoes several times since then. One time he even cried because I had gotten him a second pair of sneakers well before his old ones needed to be replaced. His shoes kept getting wet from some yard work he was doing and he'd have no choice but wear wet shoes around. 
His last pair of work boots showed up with the first pair of sandals he has owned in over 25 years. Because there was a BOGO sale that I totally made up. I just wanted to get him sandals because we camp a lot and him using camp showers without sandals always grossed me out. But I had never managed to find a pair in his size until then. Boy howdy, this made me tear up a bit. I grew up cardboard box as our kitchen table poor. And the third boy in the family so I never had new clothes, or even clothes that really fit because my brothers were much taller. I'm doing well now, but I wasn't in my 30s before I owned a second pair of sneakers prior to the current pair falling apart, Aka mowing shoes. Even as I started making more dollar sign it felt ostentatious to have a second pair, you can only wear one at a time right. Early 30s my lady realized I wouldn't and bought me a nice pair of sneakers plus a $150 pair of dress shoes as I'd gotten a promotion and would be in front of clients. Didn't think I really cared about shoes until I opened them and started sobbing. Turns out there were decades of poverty and used shame and trauma swimming around inside and that kind act helped me start to let go of things I didn't even know I was carrying. It took some time and reflection to realize all of the other facets of my life that my experience as a kid was affecting, but my path to healing started that day, with those shoes. As a fellow once on the receiving end of the same gift, from a similar background, please know that you've given him much, much more than a few pairs of shoes. That I have prostate cancer. I have told my siblings, and my next door neighbor who also has it, we compare treatment options and progress. He chose radiation while I am considering surgery, but I feel like I would be garnering for sympathy if I shared it with more people that I know. Edit, this blew up, I wasn't expecting that. Thanks to everyone for your responses, personal stories, and well wishes. My neighbor is 83 and only had the option for radiotherapy or chemo. He chose the radiation. I am 70, and my options are radiation surgery, and active monitoring through MRI and SAR testing. Doctors all told me that radiation now would render me ineligible for surgery down the road if it comes back. My MRI was PIRADS4, and a biopsy returned to a 12 samples positive for cancer, all contained with the prostate, Gleason score 3 plus 4. I hate the idea of not getting it out and possibly of it spreading to lymph nodes and or bones. I'll go visit the surgeon tomorrow who has performed 18,000 robotic assisted radical prostatectomies and has had excellent results and patient reviews. I hate everything about this, and I just want it all to be over with. My therapist told me yesterday it's completely fine for adults to ask for compliments and sympathy. So what if people think you are fishing for them? You are fighting an immensely hard battle. You deserve the sympathy and kind words. I wish you all the luck in the world. Thanks for watching, please press the like button if you enjoyed and the notification bell next to the subscribe button to never miss another video. Let me know your thoughts below, bye.